Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to do something a little bit different. We have a tank that's filled with water. I have a small little opening at the very top right corner that's open to the atmosphere. So you can see the liquid is all the way to the very top. Let's say that the liquid is water, H2O. And in this case, the tank is accelerating to the right instead of downward. So there's no effect in the vertical direction, but there is an effect in the horizontal direction. And so the question now is, what is the pressure inside the tank at the top and what is the pressure inside the tank at the bottom? We're going to take a small little area region right there. So this is a small little area A. Same over here, small little area A. Of course, the area is so small that we don't have to worry about the fact that it's slightly, the bottom of the area is slightly below the top. We're just going to assume we're just at the top of the tank. And what is the pressure at the top of the tank? Well, normally you would say the pressure is zero because you're not down into the liquid. But that's not going to be the case because you're accelerating downward. So this pressure caused by the acceleration. So the way we're going to do that is again the, the following. We're going to say that the uh, pressure by definition is equal to the force divided by the area. So in this case, uh, we can say that the pressure is equal to the force, which is going to be the apparent weight of the liquid, the apparent weight divided by the area. Now you may say, well, wait a minute, how can you have apparent weight in the horizontal direction? The reason why you have apparent weight is because you're accelerating this way, you're pushing all that liquid in front of you towards the right, you're accelerating it, meaning you're applying a force to that, so therefore it acts like it has weight, it has apparent weight. So in this case, the apparent, will, apparent weight will be the mass of the water times, not instead, times g in this case, because the real weight due to gravity, but it's the apparent gravity, in this case will be the acceleration, divided by the area. And again, we know that the density is equal to the mass divided by the volume, which means that the mass is equal to the density times the volume. So we replace the mass here by the density of the liquid times the volume of that liquid times the area all divided by A. Now notice that in the horizontal direction, we have the positive x direction to the left from the origin over here. That means that this area is at a distance x to the left from the origin. So that means that we can say that the pressure is equal to the density of the liquid times the volume. In this case, the volume is going to be the area times the height or the length of that rectangle, which is going to be x, and times a, all divided by a. And then notice that the a's cancel out. So this is equal to the density times a times x, all divided by, well, divided by nothing because a cancels out. So simply density times A times X. Notice, normally, we see that the pressure due to the depth is going to be equal to density times G times Y. But in this case, instead of G, we have A. Instead of Y, we have X. The further you go to the left, the greater the pressure. So the pressure will be the greatest over here, and the pressure at the very right will be equal to zero. It's simply a function of where you are in the tank from right to left. The further to the left, the greater the pressure because the function of x, it's a function of the acceleration and the function of the density of the liquid. So pressure equals density times acceleration times the distance from the right of the tank because you're accelerating to the right. And that is how you find the pressure at the top. So this is pressure at the top. But what about pressure at the bottom? Well, not only do you have pressure because you're a distance x away from the right side, you also have pressure because you are down below. So you can say you can put a little air element over here, and then you can say you have that weight of the liquid down there. But because of that, we realize that the pressure at the bottom is simply going to be equal to rho gy, which is, of course, the weight of that column of liquid, liquid in this direction, but we also have to add the pressure rho ax because we have pressure due to the acceleration to the right and all the liquid to the right of that spot right there. So the pressure is caused by both acceleration and the weight and the gravity, which means the column of liquid that's above there as well. Now notice that the density is common, so what we can say here that the pressure at the bottom is going to be equal to the density times 
g plus a, well, let's see, gy plus ax, and I think that's the best we can do. It's simply the density times gy for the height, and the density times ax for the distance away from the right side, and this would then be the way you calculate the pressure at the bottom of the tank that's accelerating, accelerating to the right. So you have the two pressures to worry about, and that is how it's done.